everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter, and in this episode, I'm gonna be taking a look at the most basic commands you can use in the terminal. How to get started in the command line, not to be scared of it. It was Daniel Johnson that left a comment on my channel asking for a video covering the basics of the command line. And so that's what we're gonna do today because I know exactly how he feels. When you first open up the terminal, it looks scary, it looks sketchy, you feel like you're gonna break your computer, but you don't need to be afraid. And here's the first five or maybe 10, we'll see how far we get, commands you can start using right now. Okay, so we're gonna get started in the terminal today, and to do that, I'm gonna come down to my dock and open it up. If you don't have it in your dock, you can just open up a new finder window. You can go into your applications folder, and all the way down at the bottom, you should see a folder called utilities, and you can double click and open up the terminal. You can set different colors for your terminal. I just have mine like Matthew Broderick War Games, like black and green, because that's how I like it. Let's talk about the terminal and what all this is that you're looking at here on the screen. The command line is the actual line that you're about to write on. So if I was to write here, I'm on the command line. I'm about to put a command into the computer on that line, and it's gonna do something. The prompt is a common term you'll use when you're dealing with the terminal, and for me, my prompt has the name of my computer and my username with a dollar symbol. Some people simplify the prompt so it's just the dollar symbol and they don't need all that information beforehand, but by default, this is what it looks like most likely. The terminal is what we use to describe the program itself. When I open up terminal, I get this whole interface. That is the terminal. Okay, let's talk about running a command on the command line now. But first, to do that, we have to know the parts of the command that you're about to run. Nearly all commands you're gonna run have three parts. The program, the option, and any arguments that might go with it. I know that sounds really scary and really confusing, but stick with me. Let's run our very first command in the terminal, and that's gonna be a simple command that just has the program, it has no arguments or options on the end of it, just the program itself. We're gonna figure out where the heck are we in our computer. We're going to type the letters P W D. That stands for print working directory. And what we're going to do is actually print to the screen where we're at in our computer. Where is the terminal actually almost like a little investigator. He's sitting somewhere in your computer ready to do stuff. We want to figure out where the heck he is right now. So if I press enter, you're going to see it says slash users slash Jesse Showalter. That's the folder I'm currently in. Everything that's gonna happen in the command line, for the most part, is gonna be a representation of what happens on your computer. So I can come over here and open up, and you can see that I have a folder called Jesse Showalter, right? That's my standard, like, Mac OS X, like, users folder, right? And, and this is now telling me where I'm at. I'm inside of this folder. So I should now be able to access any of these folders that are inside of that directory. Let's run our next command. In this command, we're just gonna see a list of all of the different stuff and folders and directories of the directory we're currently in. So remember, if, if you saw, remember our last command, we're inside of my users slash Jesse Showalter folder. We should be able to see all of these other folders. How do we actually see them? I'm gonna type the, the letters LS. That stands for list. And when I press enter, you can see I get a, a list of all of the, t the items that are currently there. You can see in alphabetical order, those are all the directories that are, you know, available to me right now. Now that was another just program. Let's add a little option to the end of it. I'm gonna write the word type list, but then I'm gonna put a space, a dash, and an L, and then I'm gonna press enter. That's gonna give me a list in long format. That's the argument to the program, right? So now I've listed everything out. Congratulations, you just ran your first complex program in the command line. Well, now that we know that we have all of these directories available to us, let's run another command that will actually change the directory that we're currently in into one of the other directories. So I wanna type the words CD, or the letters CD, that stands for change directory. See how easy the terminal is? See how awesome the command line is? It's so simple. So we write CD, and that's gonna help us change directory. Now we're gonna pass in an argument. What directory do you wanna change into? Well, we wanna go from where we're at, which is currently inside of our Jesse Showalter folder, and I wanna go into my, let's say, the desktop, okay? So I'm gonna write space, capital 
D and just spell the word desktop. Okay. Now a quick tip, you can spell out a large portion of the word and just press tab and it will auto complete the rest of the word for you. As long as it's not confused from other directories you're about to go into. I press enter and now it tells me I'm on the desktop. See my prompt? If we zoom in and look, it's telling me that I'm on my desktop. This is why I don't like to change my prompt because I like that confirmation. And so now I'm on my desktop. You could, as soon as you get here to confirm, right? Print working directory. Yep, absolutely. I'm on my desktop. I can then write list, but I don't get anything because there's nothing on my desktop. How about we make something on our desktop? So our next command, we're going to actually make a directory. I know, don't be scared. We're going to make a file. Usually you would make a file on a Mac just by right clicking and writing new folder, right? And now we have an untitled folder there that we can name something, but we don't want to do that. We want to use the command line to make stuff. So here we go. We're going to make something in the command line. You can see we're going to print working directory. First, what we're going to do is we're going to write the word clear and just clear up our, our terminal to make sure it's nice and easy. I don't like looking at all that stuff. You can always just write clear to wipe out everything you've done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write print working directory. Sure enough, I'm on my desktop and now I want to make a directory. Okay. How do we do that? Well, we're going to make a directory by writing the letters M K D I R make directory. If I do that, it's saying you can't do that. You need to pass some arguments. You got to pass some options. What do you want your directory to be named? You can't just be saying make directory. I don't understand what you want from me. So let's pass it an argument. We're going to say MKDIR, that stands for make directory, and I want to call it uh, test. You'll see the minute I press enter, we got a test folder that just popped up here on our desktop. We just made a directory. <laughs> let's um, change directories into that folder. So we're going to press CD and we're going to go into the test. And now when we print working directory, you'll, you'll see that we're inside of the test directory. Let's get out of that directory and go back to the desktop. Ah, how do we do that? We're going to press CD and then we're going to press dot dot slash. That's going to go one layer up, one level up in the directories, right? It's going to back out. When I do that, you'll see that I am now back on my desktop. So anytime you want to get out of something, you can just do dot dot slash and go backwards. If you want to go out of something and into something else, like for instance, let's go back into um, to the test directory. If I want to get not just out of test and go into the desktop, but then I want to go somewhere else, we can do that. So let's say for instance, actually we're going to back up one second. We're going to make another directory on our desktop. We're going to MKDIR one called Jesse. So now we have a new directory there and I'm going to CD into Jesse. Now you can see I've changed directories into my Jesse folder or Jesse directory. Okay. I'm in there. I don't want to do separate command to go up and then another command to go into test. So I'm going to do CD dot dot slash and then I'm going to start writing test and it knows that it's there and I've just done that whole traversal into the test directory like that. Now I'm going to CD one more time and I'm just going to come out of here. Now I've made these junky directories. I really like my Jesse one, but I don't like the test one. I want to get rid of that directory. Okay, let's do this. So we're going to get rid of that test directory. To make it, we put MK for make directory. If we want to remove it, maybe we would write RM D I R and then the name of the directory test. Boom. We just completely deleted. So we've removed the directory and now we just have, you know, the one directory that we've made sitting on our desktop. Really fantastic. But what if we want to make a file inside of that directory? Well, we could do that. Let's just CD into Jesse. And now we're going to make a file. There's a lot of ways that you can make a file and I'm going to cover two quick ways to do that right now. The first one is called touch. It's like you just reached in and touched a file into existence and you literally just write the word touch. Okay. If you write touch and do just that, it's going to say, man, you need to pass me an argument. I don't know what you want me to touch. That was a little bit creepy the way that I said that. But if you pass in an argument, just like making and removing a directory, you want to write touch. That's the command or, or the program we're about to run and you want to name the file. So we're inside of the Jesse folder. Let's start a website. We're going to write touch index.html. 
and we're gonna hit it. And when we go into our desktop, our Jesse file, look at that, we have a brand new one here. Let's, let's do that again so you can see. And this is another good lesson. I've deleted that one manually just with my mouse and my cursor. I'm gonna go back to my terminal and I wanna do that same command again. I'm just gonna press up on the arrow key and that's gonna start cycling through all of my most previous commands that I've run. So I can cycle through and just find touch index.html again and hit it again and bam, it made me an index.html file. Well, let's do that again in a different way and actually give it a little bit of something something. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove uh, index.html. Okay, so I've deleted that one. And instead of removing a directory, I just removed the file, right? So I removed the file. And now I wanna make it a different way. Instead of touching it and having like an empty file, I wanna actually put something in it. So instead of that program of touch, we're gonna to run a program called nano. And we're gonna then name the file index.html. And it's opened up like almost like a text editor that we can put something in. So I'm gonna put a little paragraph. Actually, let's make it an H1. That's a headline for those of you that aren't savvy with the website making. And we're just gonna say, hello world, as you know, as you always do when you make a website. And that says, hello world, okay. So it says, hello world. And then we're going to exit by pressing command X. And it's gonna ask you down at the bottom, do you wanna save this modified change? I'm gonna press yes. And then I'm just gonna press enter. And bam, it's created an index.html file that when I open it with Chrome, you'll see I have a hello world statement inside. I just wrote a website inside the command line. Amazing. Well, that's it. That's how simple it is to use the terminal to get into the command line and start running commands on your computer. This is going to be different for PC versus Mac, but there's a lot of similarities. I'm going to leave some links down in the description about basic terminal commands, basic command line stuff for PC and for Mac. And so please make sure to check out those resources so you take this kind of introduction to the terminal to the next step and actually use it for all of your stuff. It's an awesome thing and you should spend as much time as possible in the terminal. A little bit of advice, if you really wanna learn the terminal, I would just keep it open on your computer and try to run all basic commands like creating and deleting of files and moving files around using only the terminal and see how you can do with that. You become really proficient in just running commands and cycling through them for your development process. I hope that helped you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I like to do a lot of stuff about design and development and creative stuff just like this. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you'll stick around. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comment section. And remember to check the description for all the links to the different learning resources I've put for Mac and PC and command line. Hopefully those will help you guys. I hope you guys are making amazing stuff. Hope you're designing amazing stuff. And I hope you're a little less afraid of the terminal. I'll talk to you guys next time.